This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. All right, wrestling fans at home, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Insiders, the podcast. We tried to get Tony Atlas here via car. We tried to get him in via helicopter. Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker said it could not happen right now due to the coronavirus. I could only be talking about one man, the man up in Auburn, Maine right now, enjoying that Milwaukee lager, 24-ounce, 99-cent beer, the Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas. Tony, how are you, buddy? I'm doing absolutely wonderful. The good Lord kept me healthy. I'm not sick. My wife is sitting in the hospital uh, uh, recovering from a stroke, but she don't have the virus. And uh, we got a great president that is looking out for American people. And so I thank everything for us Americans right now. I want to give my condolences to all the people that have lost loved ones in this in uh, in, in this situation. And, and I wish them uh, all the well because a lot of people is not as lucky as you and I, Dan, to be able to avoid uh, being affected by this virus. But there's a lot of family out there that that was was not so uh, lucky, and so right now I want to give my condolences uh, uh, to them families. All right, Tony, we're going to talk about that in a second, but I have to ask, what is that noise over there? What noise? You're ruffling around with something over there. What are you doing? I'm trying to open up these bag of potato chips. You're trying to have some potato chips. All right. Well, I, th- I thought that, you know, I've always got to eat something. All right. Well, that's right. It would be chicken wings if you were in the studio for the fans. Well, you know why I got to eat something because I'm killing. Because you're what? Killing. You're killing. No, killing. You doing what? We well, see up north. You always say color. Oh, you're colored. Yeah, but down south is curly. I, so that's why you need potato chips. Yeah. All right. Well, are you still do you have a nice cold beer with you right now, Tony? Yes, I do. All right. A Twenty-four ounce, ninety-nine cent. What was it? Milwaukee old lager. Milwaukee, Milwaukee's best lager. Milwaukee's best lager. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not much yeah. of a beer drinker, Tony. So you'll have to have one for me too. Uh, you like night, your whiskey? I do. You're right. You have a good memory. I now, see, I can't drink that. I can't drink that whiskey. Why can't you drink whiskey, Tony? It, it's too it's too strong. I, I can't drink strong alcohol. You like a cold one, though. Yeah, because in order for me to get a buzz, I drink about three of them to get three a buzz. Right. But, but with that whiskey, I drink three three shots of whiskey. I can't even walk. That's what I mean. You get a quicker buzz with the whiskey. Yeah. That's why I like it. All right. All right, Tony. We talked about that horrible day in WWE with so many great athletes and producers were released. Uh, fans around the world have been hitting us up wanting to know how you have been. As you mentioned, you know, you are under the... Uh, stay-at-home advisory up in the state of Maine. Uh, your wife, Monica, she suffered the stroke last June. Uh, she's been hospitalized ever since. Her income from her work is gone. Her Social Security check goes to the hospital. And now you, trying to survive on your own, you have no more personal appearances to make for income, and your job as a personal trainer is dried up as a result of this coronavirus. How are things going for you up in Auburn, Maine? Well, my mother... Miss Beatrice James White, she always taught us kids. She raised nine kids by herself, and she said, never worry about the problem. You know what the problem is. Worrying about it is just going to make the problem worse. What you do now that you know what the problem is, you only concentrate on the solution. And so that's what I try to do is concentrate. How can I make it through this? How can I pay my bills? How can I do this? I don't look at the fact of what's going on because I already know that. I only concentrate on the solution. And you know when you concentrate on the solution, it it keeps away depression. It keeps you up. It keeps you because you're at your best when you relax. When you relax, you're able to think. But once you get worried and frustrated, you, you, uh, you can't think. And I 
always just thinking of what can I do? Just like luckily, luckily for me, I'm able to do this uh, 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 broadcast uh, with you because you, instead of worrying about the problem, not being able to do something, you came up with an idea where we still could reach out to all our many, many fans out there and, and do this broadcast. So that's what I would encourage people to do. That's part of things that you probably wanted to do, but never didn't didn't want to take the, the risk of doing. Now is the best time for you to, to really get busy on that project that you never had time to do or never figure or get off the road. Call. Right now you got nothing to lose. Right, and I'll tell you this, Tony. I, if it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. But it beats sitting around worrying about when this going to happen, when that going to happen, and when this going to happen. You you don't know when it's going to happen, but if you still got the now. You're right. You have to do what you can. My mother said, do what you can until you able to do what you want. So right now, I'm doing what I can. I work out here at home. I got I got some weights here. I only got 300 pounds uh, Olympic set. But if you bench press 300 pounds enough time, you feel it. You'll feel it. You feel it. I got dumbbells, not a lot of heavy dumbbells. I got dumbbells to go up to 80 pounds. So I got, you know, I, I got stuff here at the house that I could use. So believe it or not, believe it or not, though I'm hoping one day you could come up and film some of my home workouts. I would love to do that. And we've actually yeah, been trying and, to and work that's why on I could show fans how to utilize the time that you never had time for. I, I, there's a lot of st- the maintenance that need to be done to the house that, that people could do that never really had time to do. It, yeah. it, well, I don't know how it is in Massachusetts, but most people in Maine don't wash their car. They don't wash their car in Maine. Why is most that? people, not everybody now, but a lot of people, they got, you know, they do. So go, go clean the basement. See, when you do something and, 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 and you feel better. Instead of Plus just sitting around occupied. watching TV. Yeah. Exactly. Plus, it occupy, occupy, uh, occupy your man. I wish somebody uh, we, we was saying we was saying you a job for me to do some drawing because that used to be one thing I used to do to occupy my time. In fact, drawing was one of the things, along with my wife uh, Monica, that got me off of the drugs because I started to, to draw as a therapy. Mm-hmm. Drawing was um uh, was uh was my therapy. So instead of getting stoned every day. Every time I got that feeling, I pick up a pencil. I just start sketching. Well, and there are now. I'm, I'm in. By the time I finish sketching, I look at the clock. Two or three hours don't went by. Well, and if you go over to our eBay, as we're going to have linked on this show, you can get a personal drawing from Tony Atlas himself. Eighteen by twenty-four. It is suitable for framing. It's absolutely beautiful. And again, not only did you get that great artwork from a WWE Hall of Famer, but you're helping keeping the legends working. And I think that's very important. And they could buy my book. You can go to crowbarpress.com and get a Tony Atlas book. But not only a Tony Atlas book, you get other books of letters. This is a good time to pick up on your read. You know, most people stop reading after they leave school. I love to read. I mean, read. when did I tell you sat down and just read a good book? I love to read, so I'm not one of those people, but you're right. right. Most well, you people know, there's give a lot of people yep. never pick them. Yeah, never, people would buy books, but never get around to reading them. You're right. Yeah. It's like they feel like they've done their time in school and then they're done with it. Well, they they just so busy. They don't have time. And a lot of these little things that, that we used to ignore. And, 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 and like I have done so much to the house in my days off. Mm-hmm. That, that is phenomenal. And my workouts here at home is so good that I probably never go back to the gym. Well, I then you, you know what you found again, as you said, a, a solution to at least one of the problems you had. Yeah, my workouts. I ain't got to worry about workout. I got weights here at home, and, and I and I fell back on some of the old fashioned. Uh, I'll tell you what. I, my, the, the first day that I was off, I didn't want to drag on to go down the basement with the weights and stuff. So what I did, I said I'm just gonna do some calisthenics. Mm-hmm. So I started just doing push ups. By the time I got to about 15 push ups, I couldn't believe it. Why? It felt like I was pushing 400 pounds. Oh, really? I said, I ain't felt like this in years because it got me to do things. See, in the gym, everything is easy in the gym, believe it or not. You got machines to do this and machine, but at home, it's all free weights. You have to load and unload your own weights. You have to set up your own stuff. So the, the works out are more intense, and I'm getting in better shape now than what I were when I was going to the gym. I get better workout here at home than I do at the gym. Plus, 
you're going to save a lot of money on, 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 on food. For example, if you eat out twice a day, mm-hmm. let's say lunch and dinner. Let's we'll just say once a day, just eat lunch out every day. Then the average lunch is anywhere between 10 to 20 bucks per day. Mm-hmm. Five days a week, that's anywhere between 50 to $100 a week on, on, on lunch in a month. You're talking four hundred dollars a month. You spend on lunch. It's a lot now, of lunch. For just, just for, well, uh, most when well, you buy a hot dog is ten freaking bucks almost. Yeah. A slice of pizza is ten bucks. So spending ten dollars for lunch is not a big. I mean, you go to the people are paying that for coffee. You know that coffee they get at Starbucks. Fancy coffees. Yeah. The fancy coffee is seven eight dollars for freaking. I used to go out all the time and buy what call uh a uh, uh, fettuccine alfredo with shrimp. So I went out last week. I bought me a, a box of fettuccine. It was a dollar and fifty cents for the whole box. Mm-hmm. I bought the fettuccine sauce. That was only I think two fifty. Mm-hmm. And then I bought me. I got me a half a pound of shrimp, which came to about maybe five or six bucks. Mm-hmm. So I went home, and I made me some fettuccine alfredo. I spent maybe about ten dollars for all them ingredients. But I got fettuccine sauce left over. I got spaghetti left over. Only thing I had to buy now is just the shrimps or, the shrimp, or whatever. Yeah. Cheap. yeah. So it's cheaper. Whereas if I go to a restaurant and got that same meal, it'd be seventeen, eighteen dollars for one serving. Well, you you you're outsmarting the system, Tony. I love it. It's cheaper. It might not like, be a free like, meal, but it's better than nothing, right? That's right. Just like for 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 Easter, I bought me a ham. And some sweet potatoes, made, made some, uh, and I made me a pineapple sauce to go over top of my hand. Got me some collard greens and everything. Well, the next day, guess what I have for dinner? Ham. There you go. And then I, I, I slice it off, and I put it in a slice where I can make ham sandwiches. I got to have ham for breakfast ham. And then when I get down to the bone, I take a cook, cook it until the meat fall off the bone. Then I take the meat to carve all the fat off and get all the fat out of it and make pea soup. Pea soup? Yeah, green pea soup. With the ham. With the ham is good as hell, yeah. Well, Tony, I know you are a master chef, amongst other things up there. You have great culinary skills. Oh, pea soup. I tell you what, when you come up, when you come up to take, I'll make you some pea soup if I get this. Yeah, soup. I give you a little dice ham, I'll make you some pea soup. It's very easy to make. You you, you you know, you get the you get the green peas, you boil them, you put a, a a little bit of oil in there, and uh, a, a, and, and 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 let it cook down, and then after it cook down, you put the, the, the uh, you put an onion in. You got to uh, 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 get an onion, but onion and peas. You cook all that together, your onions and your peas, along with this little cooking oil, salt and pepper. Then you put it in the blender and puree it. You do what? Puree it. Puree it. In a in a blender. Okay. You put that, in a blender. That's call it, the secret to your soup. Well, if you, if you don't do it, you get you get it, 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 it lumpy. If you had to, it, it, it's creamy. Pea soup is creamy. Right. It's like a cream soup, right? And then you put your your, your diced ham. You cut your hands up in the smallest pieces you could possibly cut them in. Then you put that back in the soup. Oh, if I, you put the ham in, if you put the ham in while you put it in the blender, the ham would just disintegrate in the blender. That wouldn't be good. Well, You'd yeah, waste no. the ham. Yeah, yeah. You want to taste the ham too. You want to taste some of the ham too. So, but it's all type of way. It's just like you make chicken out of king. You buy yourself some nice chicken breast. Get the chicken breast with the skin on, not off. That's the secret to it. Keep the skin on. Keep it juicy. If you want juicy chicken, you want that dry shit, take, get get the skin, the boneless skinless chicken. It's going to be dry. That's only good for the grill. Otherwise, it's dry as a baby bottom. Oh. They're good for making chicken nuggets out of it. You do your batter on it, a nice batter, because the batter hold the juices in. But something's got to go around that meat to hold that juice in. Now, you see, when you make your chicken out of king, you take your chicken with the skin in, you put it in the oven, with a little bit of water at the bottom it, it, so it don't uh, 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 stick to the pan or something. And then when the chicken cook halfway, halfway, you take it out of it, you pull the skin off. Then you open up a can of camel cream of mushroom soup. 
You chop up some onion, celery, and carrots, put that on top of the chicken, and dump some caramel cream soup on top of that, cover it with some lumifol, let that mama jama bake for about 30 minutes, good googa booga. John, I have to ask you this, in your own humble opinion, there was a, a wrestler, I don't know if you, you'd exactly call him a great friend, but certainly a, a contemporary, a man that was also known to enjoy a free meal in his time, that was also quite the chef, Ox Baker. Who do you think was the better cook between the two of you? Ox. You think Ox was the better cook? You're putting them over. <laughs> Why was Ox the better cook? I learned from one person. Who? Oh. My mom. Who did Ox learn from? A lot of people. Ox studied it. Right. I see, see what that. Ox did. See, Ox used to travel a lot. And in the older days, boys used to cook for themselves. It was cheaper than going out to the restaurant. Sure. And what Ox did, he would get a recipe from this guy. He would get a recipe from this guy. And he wrote a book about all the people. And what is so great about Ox Baker, he he didn't, he didn't he's a very humble man. He didn't take credit for none of the recipes, if you notice. He admitted that he took them from other people. He, yeah, it's in his book. This is a recipe he so got from this guy. He wrote, and all he the wrote, boys a, wait, wait, wait. His, he wrote a book of recipes that he took from other people? Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> I, I I don't know if that would constitute plagiarism, or I guess a recipe no, is a guys, recipe. Most but, of the guys were dead. Oh, they were dead. Okay, so it's all right well, to take most it. Most of them anyway. But all the boys had these recipes. They shared it with each other. You know how how to make a good chili. Like the guy that taught me how to make a uh, 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 beef stew was Grizzly Smith, a uh, Grizzly Jake Jake the Snake for father. He taught you how to make stew. Beef stew. Beef stew. Beef stew. All right. Now, what was the secret to Mr. Smith's beef stew? He would get the, he would take, he would take his, his meat, right? Yeah. He would season it, and he would roll it in flour. Do you think that? Then he would fry the meat first in flour. Then he put it in with the veggies. He said that what made the gravy. Do you think that that's what Lanny Poffo does with his meat? <laughs> to be honest with you, brother, I don't care what no man do with his meat. Well, Lanny said he might be, he he might be quarantined, but he's it, never long. Whack himself in the ass with it or, 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 or shove it in a meat grinder. I could care less what any man do with his meat. Unless you're cooking it. I wouldn't cook it. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, at least you're eating good up there, Tony. But you like to pick on old grandpa with that stuff, don't you? Who? You. Who's grandpa? Me. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I, I know, you know, We last year on the Easter special, we talked about your uh, love of whistling in the wheat fields. I thought maybe you knew something about Lanny and his self-service. Well, no, but see, I whistle with them women. You like to whistle in the wheat fields. Oh, you know, the women's like it more than I do. Well, that's how I believe when your exes fell in love with you. That's right. Yep. She said, she said, boy, I ain't never had that before. Forget about Jake the Snake Roberts with Damien. You you really went to town. That's right. You Jerry know. Blackwell taught us guys that. Jerry Blackwell taught you. Really? No. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry well, liked to whistle in girl, the wheat fields. We, if, if we had this girl, you would call her an arena rat, but she used to come and do the boys every week we was in town. That's a rat, well, yeah. Where she got with this guy to call Birdhead Jones. Birdhead Jones. Now Birdhead was was known to be very well blessed. He had anywhere between eleven to twelve inches hanging from him. So he used to do this girl every week. So one week he was looking for her, and he couldn't find her. So the next morning I was on my way to the gym. Mm. So when I got back from the gym, I said, "Hey." That girl is here at the hotel, and Bird has it where she's at. So I said, she's in Jerry Blackwell's room. So then she came out. She got into the car. She kissed Jerry goodbye and everything. <laughs> and uh, I said, why would a girl uh, want to go with Jerry Blackwell, who don't have much at all, and pass up a guy like Birdhead, who's hung like a horse? Mm -hmm. And then Jerry said, well, Birdhead, he, he stick his tongue. I said, Birdhead, he don't know how to whistle. What you should say, and you know, that's what Jerry yeah. Blackwell said. Birdhead didn't know how to whistle in the wheat fields. That's right. That's really? right. That's All right. Well, he had a little so PJ Goodyear with that, him, I guess. That, that girl rather she rather had the whistling in the wheat field than to go to the lumber camp. 
Well, the Crusher had many talents that we didn't know about from watching the AWA, I guess. Yeah, and he could drop kick you too. Yeah, he threw a hell of a drop kick. I'll say that for a guy that was 400 pounds, but apparently he found a, a, a skill that got him over even more in life. You know, he was like the first Bam Bam Bigelow. He was, yeah. That's a great analogy. Yeah. I don't think he was yeah. as tall as Bam Bam, but he was very agile. Yeah, he would, he could do anything in that ring, and the way he looked, you would never you would never think so. Yeah, no, I, I enjoyed him watching Georgia him when I was boy. a kid. Old Georgia boy. All right, Tony. Well, what do you see happening? When do you? I know you're not exactly a psychic like our friend Alan Damsky, but. When do you think we're going to see life get back to normal a little bit? Do you see any signs of it? Next month. Next month. And why do you think next month? Because of President Trump. Because pre President Trump said so. Yeah. Now, I know you were invited to be on the Corona Task Force with Dr. Deborah Burks, but what exactly makes you so convinced we're going to be able to go back to work and enjoy life a little bit more than this quarantined way of life next month? Because, because... If we go, you, if people have to go through this one more, you see the thing about them doctors is this: they getting paid. Yeah, they getting the payday. They getting a the payday out of this stuff, so they want to drag this shit out as long as they can. What President Trump is looking at is this economy fall down so low for every month that this economy is closed. They're going to take three months to, to, to get to get it back to where it was at before. It fell. So if it go for another month, people is going to, uh, they're going to lose it. You're right. Crime rate, crime going to shoot through the fucking roof. And it, we've been seeing strange examples of it everywhere. I told you about the story about a guy that broke into someone's home in the middle of the day, right a couple blocks away here at the studio last week. It's been brother, nuts. Brother, just think about it. People could lose their freaking everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, what? what is it like, like, like Trump said, which is worse? You're going to lose, you know, uh, what, what, what is worse, get, uh, uh, getting the virus or just losing everything that you ever worked for the rest of your life? People can lose their homes behind this. They, they can lose, be evicted. Well, I don't exactly call myself uh, an expert in any way, shape, or form, but there are people that have said the swine flu has been far worse than the coronavirus. I, I, I really don't, I remember the swine flu existed, I really don't remember much about it. I think it was maybe 2009 or 2010. I don't remember the way of life being. Yeah, Harley Race, Harley, Harley Race, our, our, our wife died from that. BJ Race died from the swine flu? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she caught that. Uh, uh, she, she caught that. Like thing. Yeah, and, and she nice never lady. got over yet. Yeah, yeah, hard because I remember I used to go down and work for Harley uh, in Missouri. He was, he was promoting shows. Yeah. And uh, he told me that's what his wife uh, passed away for. It was a little bit of woman. She was a very nice lady. She'd come to the Cauliflower yeah. Alley Club every year. Oh, I used to love her, man. A lot of energy. Did you ever go over to the races for a little barbecue? Yeah, yeah, I did. And the rhubarb pie. Not poontang, though. No, no, rhubarb pie. Rhubarb pie. Okay. Holly, is that yeah, good yeah, of a yeah. barbecue? To make that yeah. yeah, yeah, he invited us over to his house. I mean, you had to go to the champ house. Come on. Well, we had him here in the studio, Tony. What a great interview we had with Holly Race. I only wish we could have had him back more to tell more of his great stories. We always look at Holly Race as the champ. That's what he was. Eight times, he was baby. He was, a true, he was a true champ, a true champion. All right, Tony. Well, at least we're catching up a little bit with you about what's going on in this coronavirus world we're in right now. Uh, have you had a chance to see any of this empty arena wrestling we have on TV now with Raw and SmackDown? No. no. No, 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 I didn't, because normally about this time, I'd be on the phone with uh, Monica. You're on the phone with Monica between 8 and 11 on Monday night? No, no most of the time, yeah. It, it, it depends on what time I'm able to uh, to, to call her, oh, you know, okay. when my day is done. You're like, normally, if I was talking to you right now, I'll, I'll be talking to her. So that's why I say I can't do another uh, uh, too no, long, no, because I want to make sure I talk to her before she go to you got to talk to her before bed. she goes to bed. All right, yeah, well, we yeah, just yeah. We wanted to check in with you. We wanted to let the fans know that you're alive, that you're breathing. Uh, until we can get you back here into the studio, I think while most people enjoy the video broadcast that we do, we're going to try and do it podcast style. And if you fans at home like it, we'll keep doing it. I think that's a pretty simple way to look at it, Tony. Oh, yeah. You know, I feel over the years, 
And I had to be one of the luckiest people that ever set foot in the world of wrestling. Why is that? I was trained in the 70s by wrestlers that was big stars in the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. So through them wrestlers, I got to learn about uh, wrestling in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. How they travel, you know, mostly by train. You know, a lot of guys told me to catch the train. I hear a lot of talk about the train, the train, the train, the train. So it was a lot of trains. The way guys used to see who's going to win. Uh, they would have more than one wrestler that night. Mm -hmm. And one guy uh, say, well, if you want to wrestle, whoever y'all guys wrestle back here and whoever win, I put you in a match that night. There you go. Yeah, it was just weird the way they did that because the promoter was not really a promoter there. Yeah. The wrestlers and the wrestler was set in the dress room and they decide on who's gonna do what. Yeah. And then they would go and tell the promoter, hey, we got this idea that we want to try to promote it. Oh, great, I promote it. I remember when I first started with George Scott and, and the Crockers in Charlotte, and every Monday we used to get paid, we go to the office and get our checks. Well, what they would do. When you walk in the office, you would see Wahoo McDaniel, Paul Jones, Rufus R. Jones, Black Jack Mulligan, Rip Flair, all of them, they would get their check and they would stay at the office all day mm -hmm. for a meeting. And what and what George Scott, when I became a main eventer, they started doing it with me. And what they would do, they would say, look, Tony, uh, we were thinking about uh, pairing you up with uh, S.D. Jones. Uh, how do you think that's going to work? Or would you rather be with Rocky Johnson? You, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hey, hey, who you have your best matches with? Uh, how it is working with uh, Jack Evans or, uh, or, or you want to work with Robert Fuller? I mean, which one work out the best? Because you're the main eventer. Right. Uh, um, how you think this is going to work? So we come up with this idea of how to get this program going between us, you know. And, and then we know who's going to come out Victoria, you know, at the end of the uh, program. Right. But then sometimes something will happen. Like, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. They brought in Tommy Wildfire Rich. <clears throat> Tommy Wildfire Rich from Tennessee to Georgia to go all around with Abdullah the Butcher. He's supposed to be there for only two weeks to put Abdullah over. Mm -hmm. They were a little white boy uh, that was good looking so that uh, 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 um, uh, Abdul could slaughter every night to get heat. You know what get I mean? Get some color, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get the color and, and to get heat on Abdul because he just got back from Japan. Right. Just got back from Japan. Mm -hmm. I was wrestling at that time under a mask called Black Atlas. Mm -hmm. I wore a mask. But anyway, make a long story short, this is Tommy's first night in. First night. Now, he was supposed to be a jobber, go all the way around and, 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 and job out for, 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 uh, 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 Abdullah the Butcher. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I had my match. I would, came back to the dressing room <clears throat> and uh, Tommy walked out and the freaking place exploded. Why was that? The way he looked. Oh. <laughs> Russell was big, gruesome looking guy back in the 70s. We talk about the 70s now. You yeah. know? <laughs> Every generation. <laughs> You know, she told about it. No good looking people in wrestling back in them days, man. You look at Ox making them at. You know, no pretty boy. This kid was, he was pretty. Long, silky, blonde hair, you know, fair skin, tall, you know, long eyelashes to the women. And the women started screaming. They, was, they were screaming. And as soon as Abdullah hit him, the place went crazy. Really? The only Anderson come running back in the dressing room. I said, Tony, get your black ass out there and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll get uh, help Abdullah back to the dressing room. I thought they jumped on him, you know, beat him up. We had to carry him back. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. When I got there, the fans was getting up out of the seat. They was getting ready to go to the ring to help Tommy. Mm -hmm. So I ran into the ring and uh, Abdullah looked at me and he looked at me. It looked like a deer. Uh, what's it? Uh, 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 with a deer look at the headlight look? Deer in the headlights, right. Yeah, he had that look on his face. He was scared enough. He said, brother, you got to get me out of here. Get me out of here. And I said, what the fuck you want me to do? I mean, I'm a working kid. He said, give me a slam. And he never took a slam a day in his life. This was his first slam. 
Mm-hmm. So I picked Abdul up and slammed him. I forgot to tie my mask. My mask came off. Oh, okay. My mask came off uh, 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 that night. So then Abdul said, just get on me, hit me. So I started hitting Abdul. I had to fight Abdul all the way back to the dressing room. He was smart. Yeah, because if I'm hitting him, they won't. They won't, right. Right. So that's what he knew. He, he said, get me out of here. I didn't know what he was talking about. I'm standing there looking at him. He said, he said, hit me, Kassava. <laughs> hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me. I know. So I kept hitting him. I kept hitting And the people was going nuts. Yeah, get him. Yeah, get him. It, I became a big superstar. I got unmasked all at one night. People knew who I looked like. I had this big afro. I, I just beat up Abdullah and saved somebody that they loved. The next day, they teamed me and Tommy Rich up. Did you work with Larry Shreve at that point or not? Oh, well, yeah. We had a lot of great matches. There. A Shreve. lot of matches. A well, lot of good matches. Another man that certainly wasn't foreign to a free meal, but that's a, another story for another time, yeah, Tony. Yeah, yeah. I made a lot of money. With me and Abdullah made a lot of money, and me and Tommy Rich made a lot of money. But we both got made that same night. And, that and same I wasn't match. going to say, yeah, I, I was there to get experience. And you turned into a superstar. In one night. One night. And you weren't and even Tommy planning Rich on too. it. Tommy did it his first night. He was only supposed to stay a week. Yeah. Well, it's interesting how things work out, Tony. Just yeah. like it's an interesting way for us. Uh, I know you have to get going. Your lovely wife is waiting for your little uh, phone call tonight. We just have a, two questions, Tony, that came in over the while while we were on the air. Uh, from Pistol Pete Tringali on the MWF Board of Directors. He's worried right now, Tony, in the current environment in the world right now, that it could lead to social unrest. Do you think it's wise to try and hoard some cash at home? Or in his case, he has pieces of silver he got off of Fox News. Do you think that would be wise? Uh, repeat that. I didn't hear all that. He thinks there's going to be social unrest in the country. He thinks people are going to start to lose it. He's been hoarding pieces of silver at his house. Some people, they'd maybe keep some cash under the mattress. Do you think that would be safe right now? I can't speak for 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 his neighborhood, yeah. but... But but that was one of the things that I, that I that I was worrying about too because here in Maine, it's hard to get ammunition. Yeah, people are banned up on ammunition because if this goes too much longer, that's that's my biggest fear. That see, a criminal when tabs get bad, the safest people to be around is a criminal. Why is that? He know how to hustle and get his money without hurting people. Mm-hmm. The worst guy is the guy that never did anything wrong in his life. They don't Them are the worst. When times get bad, this guy is the one that loses. it. You imagine that these kids that play on the cell phone all the freaking time. Well, I just have to pay myself. They, my cell phone pushed back the date until the 13th. Of, you know, nobody had to make any payment until the 13th. They gave us this month free. You got a Verizon free month? Bill. Wow, really? We're not free. You're going to pay the bill, oh. but you don't have to try to make it. You didn't work a payment. Pay. It's not free. No, no. Do it a little now, later. Yeah. I, I just got a thing in the mail for my cable company. Mm-hmm. These, like cable, phone, oh, they want their money. They want it now. Spectrum could give a red ass about you not being at work right now. They could care less, brother. Them bills are still coming in. CMP, the electric bills are still coming in. Most people apply for uh, 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 what you call uh, uh, unemployment. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them is not going to get that. A lot of people is not going to get that check either, you know, that, that come through uh, what they talk about, the government check. The stimulus too. check, yeah. Right. A lot of people ain't going to get that. Why aren't so, they going to get it? Right. Because I know for a fact that I'm going to be behind in my mortgage. Mm-hmm. I, I, I know that, you know. I hope I don't get evicted. But uh, and, and, and people can't keep up. They got car payments. Sure. You know, all this stuff. And then people, that never been without. They don't want to become the most dangerous. They're not used to it. They're not used to suffering. They're not used to hard times. You know, people, and you take, most people can't cook. 
Well, at least they have you up there in Auburn for that. You can cook for the neighborhood. Well, I just hope somebody will try to break in thinking because I'm Tony at they're thinking that I got money or something here and try to rob. I don't think they'd try and break into your house, Tony. They'd Brother, be too afraid of those two guns you have coming out of your chest. Brother, I was raised in the hood, and I see what people would do. When they get desperate? <laughs> when they get desperate, I see what people would do. So I'm an old man. I remember we have stuff like where people would do anything. I've, I've learned my lesson when I was about five or six years old. I was coming home from trick or treating. Mm -hmm. They'd be teenage boys. They probably were 13, 14 years old. They jumped on me and my brother and kicked the crap out of us and took our candy. They stole your candy. Yes, because he's got a real I know they poor people didn't buy their uh, 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 kids candy all the time. Mm -hmm. The only time we got candy was holidays. Really? Yeah, you didn't get candy every day when you was a kid when I was growing up. It was a then real My treat. mother spent that money on food. She ain't going to yeah. spend no money on no candy. Now, now, on Sunday, you got dessert for Sunday dinner. That was it. Yeah, but by Tuesday, that was gone. Yeah. You know, by Tuesday, that cake, you know, whatever, whatever peach cobbler or, or whatever mom made, it was gone by, you know, by... You know, by Tuesday, so you had to wait till Sunday for you to get another piece of candy or something. I mean, it wasn't like this day when, when, when you get, you get everything came every day. Well, if you are like Pistol Pete and yourself, and you're worried about social unrest, what would you do with pieces of silver? What should he do with them? Should he put it in the bank? Should he bury it in his backyard like a dog with his bone? I, I don't know. I don't have any silver to hide. How old is he? Pete's uh, probably 70. Sell that shit. He should sell his silver. Sell that shit. All right, and put the money in the bank. Hell yeah. All come right. on, man. <laughs> I'm glad we've come, come up. I thought you were talking about some 20 something. Yeah. Come oh, on, no, old no. Tell, that, tell that old fox sell that stuff, man. He need that money to live on. All right. Life is more important. Come on, he's in his 70s. You know, he don't know if he got another one year or two years left on, on this earth. Think about all the rest of the buddies that I lost, like like Rocky Johnson, for example. You know, Rocky was trying to collect pictures and stuff to make his uh his his, his uh, new stuff. And like I tell you about a lot of these old politicians that that in the White House made all that money, millionaire. The, the one of the smartest guys that I seen in this campaign was uh Bernie Sanders for dropping out. See, Bernie had that heart attack. Yeah. So that heart attack told Bernie, Bernie, you ain't got a whole lot of time left with your wife. She's a beautiful this woman. A time, this is a time where we should be thinking more of our family. You know, we're lucky here to get, she, it's hard for us to become reconnected to our family. We're not used to being connected to our families anymore. Well, I know you watch the news an awful lot, Tony. Would you let Mrs. Sanders walk on you? No. No. Now, why is that? She's married. Oh, all right. If she was a single woman, would you let her walk on you? Yeah. Really? You think Jane yeah. Sanders has it in her? Yeah, I don't mess with. I don't mess with marry yeah. him. I leave. I leave unless their husband asks me to. Well, if maybe he, Bernie if he will ask, ask you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he have to. He, yeah, yeah. Old Bernie has to come. And, hey, Tony, can my wife walk on you? Then I do it. Then, but <laughs> well, yeah, we'll yeah, but I learned a long time ago. You, you leave your married women alone. We'll you know? have to tweet it, Bernie. There's so for many permission. women, brother. There's so many women in this world, and you don't need to do that. You don't need to. There's a lot of, a lot of real estate. Women outnumber men. Right. Women outnumber men almost, almost twice as many women in America than men. All right, Tony. Well, again, we get off topic. One more question before we go, Tony. Again, from the uh, the cell phone text messages, we get the junior ambassador. He wants to know, Tony, what whether you have YouTube nowadays and you have WWE Network, what old wrestling would you suggest for kids uh, that are fans of the current product to watch and maybe enjoy while they're at home right now? Well, everybody, everybody is different. What the old time, I told me one time, sometimes what is old, all of a sudden it come new. Yeah. Now, if I had anything to do with WWE or anything to do with a uh, uh, COVID uh, show, mm -hmm. I would do old school wrestling. That would be your solution. This would be my idea. I watched the show. I watched some of the show the other night. That damn talking. Too much talking. All that, all that, all that talking. Yeah. My God, I, you know we hear talking all day from the freaking news. 
that's all the, that's all we do is hear and talk and talk, 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 so, talk, yeah, talk, yeah, talk, you're talk. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, make a long story short, I would just instead of trying to run WWE Raw or all this stuff, I run a movie. That would be your solution. I would make it into like a movie. Hmm. That's what I do. I'd make it like like a movie. I would make it as realistic as pop pop. I would do something like Legend House almost. I would have the guy would just come out and wrestle. And I would do the interview with like the old Gordon Soley way where the, the, the guy is sitting there calling the match and the guy go over to the table and cut the interview right at the table. Right at the table. Not all this. Uh, yeah, get rid of all that technology. Right? Yeah, cut the interview right at the table just like they used to. Then the other guy would jump out the ring, come and attack them. Yeah, I would look at old Georgia Championship wrestling tape and old Mid-South tape, and I would do it the way they did. See, what made wrestling so great back in the older days, because the two things that always sell, always sell. And what's that? Sex, sex, and violence. Sex and violence, all right. Always sell. Always sell. But you see, Vince could do all that talking uh, uh, before. I would run TV the same way I run a house show. Just wrestling. Just, yeah, getting people at sight. But he got all these. He got all these guys anyway. He spent all that time. Like like that, that girl. What was her name? Because of the man, Becky Lynch. Out there talking to nobody. Wasn't that ridiculous? It looks it's boring because they're talking to nobody. And they're still taking long dramatic pauses too, which makes no sense. Yeah, it's just, no like, it's just like they're playing to the audience. They play to the audience and ain't there. Right. Right. It's ridiculous. Uh, they need to get the ass, to get the head out of it, get the ass out of the head. It's I, I couldn't watch it. I tried to watch it because you texted me and told me to. It was boring to shit up. I said, this is gonna put me to sleep. <laughs> Are you freaking yeah. real with me? Or oh, did everybody come out with a freaking microphone in their hand? Like we want to hear all this freaking talk. You are right. I right? mean, I mean, we just got through listening to Trump talk all day. We just got through listening to the Attorney General talk. We just got through. We want to get away from all that drama. We yeah. got enough drama. Drama. Vince do not need to create drama. He First just, of all, he needs a little sex and violence. Get away from drama. Yeah. Give the people something they're not getting it from everything else. What does this do last night that I can't get from CNN or Fox News? What? That's a good point. On every channel right now, all you see is talking because of what's going on I've been on watching Gunsmoke. You've been watching what? Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke? James Marnell's, baby. He's been saving my day. Well, I'm glad you found something the to watch. The big man, brother. I watch, I watch all these old Gunsmoke with old Chester and, 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 and Fester. I love Fester. From the Adams family? No, Festa. He, he was a, he was one of the, the, the you never watched Gunsmoke. No, I've I never think. seen Gunsmoke. No. Yeah, Festa is kind of like old West Virginia hillbilly. Oh, okay. Almost yeah, he, like he, you're he, back that, at home. Yeah, he was a wolf hunter. He was a wolf hunter, a and then he became Matt. He became Matt Daly friend. And I watched the Rifleman, the uh, uh, Bonanza. Well, you like the westerns. Yeah, and then I got these old Hercules tapes with Steve Reeves that I watch and stuff. I got my shoe tapes. I watch. See, people is looking for something right now. To get them through this, they're looking for entertainment to get them through. They can't go to football game. They can't go to wrestling matches. They can't go to you know they they they, they the whole basketball game been canceled for all year. So people got no activities in their life. Right. So, so if I was WWF uh, 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 F right now, all them guys that he got rid of just like that, mm -hmm. stupid. Vince is really getting captain. too now and stupid. This is what I would have done with them guys. Mm -hmm. I would have a tournament. Yeah, what would the tournament have been for? Well, whoever win get to stay. No, I think that <laughs> I think it would have been kind of morbid, but you know what? That would have been interesting. Imagine if they just took seven guys they were going to release and one yeah. they were going to keep. And they did a Be tournament where the, the win winner of the tournament a gets to keep their out. job. Yeah, yeah. Whoever, whoever wins, you keep it, you get to stay when you keep your contract. Yeah. And that way you get a lot of action. You get work out of these guys. You know, they got them sitting at home right now. You still got to pay them for three fucking months doing nothing. The 90 day game. Yeah. 90 yeah. days. The stupid. You know, Tony, I think that's the best idea I've heard in wrestling this week. I think, you know what? They should have you down at the performance center. 
Yeah, they would like to see these guys fight for their life. And, 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 and you watch how that match would be. He probably would have got the best freaking match he ever got in their life. You tell a guy, brother, if, 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 the, the guy that has the best match, the guy that do the best performer, get to stay. Can you imagine what these guys are going to do? They'd certainly bring it up another notch. That's Boy, for sure. they would bring it out from everywhere. Vince just got one of some of the best matches that ever going to be on, the, on, on network TV. Hey, Tony, I tell you. And I know our, our good friend Bill Eady has said it before. Some people might think you're stupid, but you're a very wise man. Ernie Ladd taught me that. Get the most mileage out of everything. The big These thing. old time promoters wouldn't have done it that way. Yeah. You was your job your way out, remember? Not sit at home and collect money. Right. Hogan was on his way to Minneapolis. That's why he put me over. That's why he put back over. As soon as Hogan got that contract, remember, that was the big fight was about with Bret Hart. Yep. Brett didn't want to. Brett didn't want to lay down going out. Right. You supposed to pass the torch. Right. And he's supposed to pass the torch to Shawn Michaels. He didn't want to pass the torch. I love Brett, but I, I'm with Vince on that. We're all all that been independent for years, you know. All right. Well, Tony, we're running out of time yet again. Hopefully, the fans are like this, and we'll do some more of it. I know you've got some big phone calls to make, not only with Monica, but you got. Wait, let me finish oh, telling wait, oh, my I'm story. Sorry. Go on, the people tell you stop cutting them off. What did I say? You cut me off again. What? How did I? I didn't know you were still going on with the story. No, I would tell you about what I would do about this. Oh, that's so right. The first thing I would have done, the first thing I would have done is have all the wrestlers to fight for their lives. Mm -hmm. Have them to fight for the ride. I, I wouldn't tell them what to do. You'd let them book their own match. Yes. Who would come up yes. with the finish? That, that old school. That was old school. Promoter didn't tell me how to do a match. Who would come up with the, the finish? Well, that is determined on the matches. All right. You have a time limit. All right. You, 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 you have a time limit. Sometimes you get the boys to agree to it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have a time limit. It's like Ruzo. In the older days, if you don't want to, they told the guys in the older days, well, you, you even do it two ways, the easy way or the hard way. You think they should turn into shoots? Well, it would be a half shoot anyway. That would make a good match. All right. What do we see? Matches is so bad. There's no shooting at all going on. Yeah, you're see, right about in that. the old days, it was it, it, it was about I would say about one third of it. Mm -hmm. We mix shooting in with the match. He had some credibility. Yeah, you have to add that credibility to. It. But everything from the beginning of the match to the end of the match is nothing but a freaking work. That people don't see nothing they can relate to. Yeah. Well, I, I I think people would have related <laughs> to your idea. Yeah, like 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 when when I grab a guy in the hope, uh, the guy would fight to get out of the hope. Now they pat the head and they come up and they do a freaking spot. Look how easy it is to get out of a freaking hope. Yep, yep. I mean, back in the older days, you know, guy was trying to fight to get out of that hope. There's no struggle. There's no struggle. I mean, it's, the guy you can get the guy you arm drag, you put him in arm lock, right? The guy get right up. And throw you off with one hand, and all of a sudden, you ain't got the hold no more. Not, e not even two, <laughs> one. Yeah. yeah, as soon as he pushed you with that one arm, you let go of the hold and hit the rope and come out and give him a taka. That's the one thing that drives me nuts about, you know, the spot when they're outside the ring and they put the guy back in. They always do it with one hand, as if they could take one hand and throw a yeah. guy back into the ring. And Mighty Mouse. Yeah. Mighty Mouse. But you watch the old match, we have to, we come up and we hit a guy a couple of times and the guy would slash us back down. You'd, you'd struggle. Getting out of a hole was not easy right. to do. Right. Well, Tony. And, you know, and the reason for that, because a lot of these old guys, like Gene Anderson, for example, brother, you got to, we're almost done. Stop okay. rushing me. Old Gene Anderson, uh, 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 you say you want to do another session anyway. Old Gene Anderson, uh, 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 one time, he got me down. Uh, in the ring, he said, how do you do in that amateur wrestler there, kid? And I said, I wrestled about four years. Was you any good at it? I said, I became champion. You think you could get out of this clinch? He got me. You were hooked? I was hooked. Yeah, yeah, show me some of that amateur shit now, kid. They rub your nose in the back and everything. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And you have to fight for real to get out of it. You got out of it, he would lock back under it. Hey, that's pretty good, kid. You can't handle you handle yourself pretty good. Then when guys used to get in the ring with me, 
and didn't want to do what I said, George Scott would pull me to the back and he would say, kid, you have to learn how to take care of yourself out there. Mm-hmm. Don't let these guys take advantage of you because they will. They will make you like a piece of crap. Take care of yourself out there, kid. So sometimes a guy would lock up with me. He said, they would call a spot. I said, no, we're not going to do that spot. We're going to do this one. And then he would try to uh, tussle with me a little bit to see what I got. Mm-hmm. Once I showed him what I got, then he went up work me. And I had to shoot a little bit with a lot of guys at the be, uh, at the beginning. You watched that match with me and, and uh, 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 Dick Murdoch and uh, 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 Adrian O'Donnell's when we dropped the title, me and Rocket. Mm-hmm. And they didn't get Rocket nothing. They beat Rocket like a bad, like a bad habit. They beat Rocket like a bad habit, and they did it uh, again with Jim Bronzel. I saw that match with me, and uh, I, I was in the ring one time with uh, uh, Jim Bronzel with Animal and Hawk, and they wouldn't do nothing for Jim. Animal Hawk wouldn't sell shit that Jim did, and men and men and men Hawk almost got in a fist fight over that shit. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, me and Hawk. Yeah, there's stuff on the internet about that. You can see it on the internet. My buddy Matthew showed me all this stuff. They bring back my movie. I got in I got into the same thing. Um, I almost got I got in a shoot with uh, the other guy, the other kid too, in, in the ring, uh, uh Jim Nighthawk. Oh, really? Yeah, he was another one that didn't want to sell nothing. Yeah. And then we had a guy down in Georgia that was real bad. He never became a big star, but he was real bad for not giving you shit. And his name was Bill White. Bill White, I've never heard of Bill. Bill White was a nasty, nasty, nasty person. Asgard Mosca was another one. He didn't want to sell? He would be, just beat the shit out of you. Well, that's how Brody was. Yeah. People, you know, they love him, but that's how Brody If you couldn't beat Brody in real life, he just go out there and pound the shit out of you. There was nothing you could do about it unless you, he felt that you could handle yourself. You, you see, Andre was like that, too. Well, another session under the learning tree of Mr. U.S. Andre Adrian the Giants. Giants. They, they put a guy in the ring with Andre, and they said, Andre, the boss want you over. Okay. And then they walk away. Then Andre go out in the ring, do whatever the hell he want to you, pin you, and walk back and finish paying cars. He finished his cribbage. <laughs> his cribbage. That's how them guys were. And, and if you couldn't really take care of yourself in the rain, guys would just chew you up, man. They wouldn't give you nothing. Piper was like that. You have to fight for your life with Piper. Mm-hmm. Johnny Ross was like that. You hear a story about Johnny Ross. Yep. Johnny didn't give you nothing. Johnny would put you over because that's all the promoter asked him to do. But during the match, he would just kick the crap out of you if you couldn't fight for real. If you couldn't protect yourself in real life. So they was real careful about who they put the belt on because they was always afraid you put the belt on somebody that couldn't handle their stuff in the ring and they got into a real fight and they your champion. See, when you put the belt on somebody, that's why Raiders fell when they put it on Costa Kingston. Yeah. Because what the belt says is this is the very best that we have. I agree with that. He he representing the whole company. Now, if they send him to an autograph signing, and he's sitting at one table as a world wrestling champion, then they set Sabrina Williams beside him. <laughs> he going to look like Sabrina uh, Williams' son. Yeah, yeah. He's not impressive in person. You, you understand what I'm saying? He's not I impressive. You, Johnny. Right? He don't have that impressiveness about him for pub, for for person stuff. Like I'm not trying to blow my own horn or nothing, but when I go places, people would say things to me that tell me even at my age now, they are impressed when they see me, and they should be. You know, and I'm and I'm a senior citizen. Well, you know, when when you see the big show. You impress. You see Brock Lester, you impress. You see Mark Henry, where Mark lost a lot of weight, but before, before he lost all that weight. He was like a little refrigerator with legs. Yes. I mean, he was very impressive. So people saw Mark Henry, they just backed up. I used to watch him when he walked into a hotel or something. People would just straighten up, you know, when they saw this monster come to the thing with Kane come through a door with that. You know, with that crazy look on his face, or Undertaker, that Hogan, you know, it was always a, a stir, you know? Yeah. 
Like, like I, 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 be at the, I was at the hotel uh, with you last time at WrestleMania, and this lady saw me in, uh, in the breakfast, and then she said, well, I knew you did something with your bill. Do you think she wanted to walk on you? No. Oh, she, just, she just kept looking at the way I was built, and she said, I figured you was involved in some type of... She asked me what I did, and I told her that I'm, I'm here to do autograph signing uh, at the WrestleCon. Uh, that what we did in New York. Right. Yeah. And she said, yeah, I knew you was into something because of your bill. Well, she was impressed by you, if nothing else. Yeah. And then not too long ago, I was driving my car, and and my cell phone was going off. So I just looked at it just for a second to get my cell phone to see who it is. And when I look up, these two black guys have walked right out in the street without looking, right in front of me. So I slammed on my brakes real fast. And they turn around, and one guy had a cup of coffee in his hand. He threw it and smashed all over my windshield. He threw the coffee on your windshield. Yeah, so I, I, I found a plot to pull over. So I pull over, and I looked at my rear view mirror, and here they coming up the street ready to fight. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, shit, I got, I, I got to fight here. I said, I hope they don't have a gun or, or a knife or something, because I got to fight these two guys. So I jumped out of the car and I just left the gym. I had my uh, a tank top on just during the summer. And as soon as I got out of the car, you know what happened? They saw those guns and they went in the other direction. No, they didn't run away. They kept talking shit to me, but they stopped. Oh, okay. As soon as I got out of the car, they stopped like dead in the tracks. And they stayed a good six to eight feet from me the whole time. And when I walked towards one of them, they back up. And there was two guys. Imagine if it was just one, yeah. Yeah, he would have just took off. But as soon as he saw me, the right away, he, he knew that to fight me, they was going somebody gonna get hurt. But they was going strictly on what they saw. Right. See? All right. And when I was on your show, I was wrestling that kid, right? You yeah, know what v people were saying? Vicente Ray Wasco, yeah. Yeah, the people say. Oh, uh, Tony Adams going to kick your ass. Because they was going by what they see. Right. See, that's what people go by. When they see something, and when you saw Coach DeKeenster, I mean, I love him. He's a great performer, one of the best wrestlers they got. You didn't see the best that WWE got there. And the people knew he was not the best. And yeah, that certainly wasn't a long-term success. You're right. No, most champions were chose by the people. All you right. know? All right. Well, Tony, again, we're running out of time here. I'm looking at the clock right now. We had a lot of fun. Uh, again, you just didn't want to talk to me no more because I'm black. That had nothing to do with it, Tony. That had nothing to do with it. We do want to remind folks that, again, if you want to help the Hoth stay on his feet, he has great artwork available. The link is here. Uh, we'd love to hear your comments. And I'm wide open for private signings. If you're available for private autograph signings and personal appearances, as long as you can drive to them throughout the Northeast, uh, you That's can right. reach out to us here in the link below. If you have questions, comments, we'd love to hear them. Uh, us trying to do this podcast style is certainly a little different right now, but you know what? It's better than having no Tony at all, right? That's right. All right. Well, again, every day we're trying to put those New England uh, wrestling history videos out. We have the Flashback Friday each week. We had Cheeky Baby. On last Friday, this week, we have Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. We're having some fun with that, telling old stories. As far as what's going to happen with MWF Ultra, we have no idea right now. And Tony's going to be back in the state again here in the studio. I guess that's up to Governor Charlie Baker, Tony. I don't know. Well, I think by, 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 by uh, next month, everything be back in order. All we right. won't be back in order, but I think we, the, the beginning of the recovery is going to start uh, uh, next month. The reason that, that I say that because it's butter for the country, and there is, you know, if you're going to cast the vibe, if, if or not cast the vibe, it ain't going. It don't matter if you stay at home. It don't matter if you be out. Who's going to get it? Is going to get it. It's in the air for God's it's sake. Yeah, you're right. All for right. God's sake, it's in the air. So it don't matter. So what do you? You're making people's lives worse by going another month and without any. Uh, we come because the flu was the same way. We had other virus, and people know what to do for it now. You know, and all you keep your distance and keep yourself clean. Mainly, use that damn soap and water. That's all you got to do. Don't be a grovel. Yeah. 
Use some soap and water. Use Bathe and every water. day. Wash your hands on a regular basis. That's all you got to do. Keep your distance six feet apart. You know, wash and sanitize everything before you touch it. Clean up around your house. Like people got all kind of trash laying in the yard and everything. Get rid of all that garbage. See, when you become filthy, that's what called the plague in Europe years ago. People got so nasty and dirty. All right. Well, you heard it from Tony Atlas. The cure to the coronavirus is don't be dirty. Don't be, don't that, well, be dirty. That's, that's pretty much what caused all these damn virus. Somebody don't want to wash their ass. All right. Well, use a little soap and water, people. Soap it makes make a big deal when you clean. I know people, if you walk to the store, Dan, I tell you this, I go, how many times you walk in the store and you smell somebody's body odor? I, it, it wouldn't be the first time, that's for sure. See what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, you're right, Tony. See what I'm trying to say? And water is free. Water is free, yeah. Water is free. Ain't nothing about, about jumping in that shower and wash your butt. People got too nasty and dirty. What it is, putting on the same clothes day in and day out, wearing the same underwear for a week or two. And there you go. Well, hopefully those heed your advice. Tony, well, I'll tell you, I had this buddy, man. Time. I'll tell you this quick story. Yeah. I had this buddy, yeah. man, and, and he would like a woman to wear underwear for about two or three days. Mm -hmm. And what did he do? He put them on his head and go to sleep. What? <laughs> well, I guess that I was a joke. Friend. He was a wrestler. I, I shared a room with one of the wrestlers one night uh, when I was out in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And, and we, what did he do? He would get a girl... He would buy a pair of underwear that he would get her to wear them for one week without taking them off. And then he would, and then she would bring them to him in a bag and he would take them out of the bag and put them on his head and go to sleep. Why would he do that, Tony? I don't know. Oh, I thought it was fantastic. Who was the wrestler? I can't remember his name. I sat in a room with him. I was in Kansas City uh, way back in the 70s. Yeah. All right, well. And then I moved this other guy, Fargo. Um, Jackie uh, Fargo. Oh my God! I, the stuff he would do, I can't even say. I can't even why, say on your show. Why is that? What did Jackie uh, he do? He was gross. He was gross. Oh man, yeah, he would get bloody cotex and and squeeze him out in his beer. Bloody what? Bloody cotex. What's a cotex? And what women use when they on their period? Oh, a tampon. Tampon, yeah. Jackie Fargo yeah, and, used and to take bloody him out, tampons. And out. Yeah, and then the, the other guy used to be with the free bird with nasty too. Uh, buddy, uh, buddy Roberts. Oh, he used to take boogers out of his nose and put them in his hair. Oh, that, that's cute. And he's yeah, he's trying to play ribs on the boys and tell me headlock me, headlock me. And it'd be in the hair. All right. Well, and yeah, we knew that. If we knew he had boogers in his hair, so we so no, I want to headlock. He was just nasty. I mean, he, I see him do nasty stuff. Adrian O'Donnell was another oh, disgusting. I know you're not uh, a big fan of his. So, you know. Yeah, I, I knew all these nasty people. You know, they were just filthy. Why was Keith Frank so nasty? Who is Keith Frank? Adrian Adonis. Was that his real name? Yeah. Well, I'll be there. Well, well, he would blow snot anywhere. You didn't like that. Well, brother, let's say you, you bring him to the studio, right? Yeah. He would lean over in the chair, put one finger on one side of his nose, and blow an oyster right there on your floor. Really? Yes. Yeah. I see him do it many times in hotels and restaurants, many times. Well. Yep. It is Donald Walker would do nasty stuff like that, too. And then the free bird, you should like that golden shower. Yeah, I've heard that. Pee that you should pee on each other. Yeah. Well, that's why I felt so free to talk about. I like women to walk on that. I felt like the the only sane one in the nut house was you. Yeah. Yeah, with me. I mean, my, my shit was harmless <laughs> compared to these guys. They they was. I see some gross stuff. I had this one buddy that every time he has sex with a woman, it got to be anal sex. The only way he'd have sex is the anal way. Only way, now, only who is way. This? I ain't gonna call his name. He's married. He's a good friend of mine. But but I, I used to share a room with him, and he used to always like to hit the woman from behind. And one night he had this girl that she had diarrhea, and, his, and stuff was oh, everywhere. 
I mean, I had to smell that all night long. Fat, I couldn't take it no more. I, I checked out and I went downstairs. I told lady I need another room. She said, we sold out. I said, ma'am, I already paid for the room. Instead, said, give my money back. Can I just crash here in the lobby? She said, yeah, but then you got to, you know, you can't, you know, if you want to sleep in the chair until the morning, she said, may have a room. I said, no, my flight leave at uh, six anyway. So I said, all right, just a couple. So I, I just sat in the lobby and talked to her all night. Well, that wouldn't be the first. You like to talk to a social person. I paid for half the room, but there was no way in the world that I could sit there and smell. No, you know, no. the back door was violated at that point. Yeah, and, and then the guy he wanted to sleep in the bed with me because he couldn't sleep in his bed no more because he had poop all over it. Oh my God! Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see some filthy. Fair, it's fair, been fair, an interesting fair. life. Yeah. Yeah, so all this stuff, you know, all this uncleanness, like you go to a buffet sometimes, you watch the next time when things open back up uh, to, a, to a buffet, people would come straight in, out of the door. Sometimes they come straight from work. They have they got dirt all over the hand, all over the clothes. They go straight to that buffet. And nobody, nobody think about washing their hands. Yeah, that's a good point. I think that's one thing that's going to change in restaurants once they're open again. Think about the buffets. The buffets are the most unsanitized places you could ever go. Because people come right in, and they do, the last thing they think about is wash their hands. Yep. And that person could be digging in his nose, scratching his butt, scratching his genitals or anything. Yeah, and then he know. come and grab the spoon, and then he come and grab that spoon to put rice on his plate, and you stand behind him, and then you put your hand right on that spoon right behind him. You're right. All right, See? Donnie, we, we've hit the hour plus mark at this point. I know you got to go. It's been uh, great to talk to you. Hopefully, we'll be able to do it again in just a couple days. Sound good to me, brother. All right, Tony, stay healthy up there. And all the fans, again, don't forget we got the Flashback Friday video. We got daily history videos. We're trying to work on that 80s event. We're going to make things happen until we speak again. You and yours, be well.